We are gathered here to celebrate the adoption of the Constitution of India, the foundational document of the world's largest democracy. Lawyers and judges spend their time and years unraveling the text of the Constitution. But the story of the Indian Constitution is not a story only of legal text and legal interpretation. It is a story of human struggles and sacrifices. It is a story of undoing injustice against the marginalized sections of our society, the women, the disabled, the Dalits, and members belonging to tribes and segments situated in far-flung areas of the country. It must be remembered that the marginalized communities were the first to plant the seeds of the constitutional ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity on Indian soil. The first wave of resistance against the colonial power came from the indigenous communities of India. Our constitution is a social contract entered into between those who were in power historically and those who were oppressed and sought to change the power hegemony and chose to govern themselves. Coincidentally, this year marks 75 years since our nation attained independence. India's liberation from colonial rule and the drafting of the constitution were simultaneous projects. The prolonged struggle for independence culminated with the demise of the colonial reign and the birth of an independent nation governed by self-rule. However, the death of the colonial regime was not accompanied by a simultaneous birth of constitutional values that we hold on so dearly to. When India gained her independence, she was invested with social evils. As the first Prime Minister said on the eve of independence, the past clings on to us still in some measure and we have to do much before we redeem the pledges we have so often taken. That has been the continuing constitutional project. As the Supreme Court said in its judgment in 2018 in Indian Young Lawyers Association, besides the struggle for independence from British rule, there was another struggle going on since centuries and which still continues. That struggle has been for social emancipation. The Constitution of India is the end product of both these struggles. The Constitution of India is to a large extent aspirational, for it seeks to deliver political freedoms and civil rights, attempting to shrug off the colonial baggage. It seeks to remedy the injustices that are suffered in a socially hierarchical society. When the Constitution was adopted, the social, political and economic realities of our nation were in stark contrast to the aspirational ideals in the text of the Constitution. The Constitution entrusted the legislature, the executive and the judiciary with the role of bridging this gap between constitutional ideals and social reality. I am conscious that colonial and pre-colonial courts followed an approach of reluctance, disinclination and inaction in protecting the rights of citizens. For instance, scholars and historians have documented the refusal of colonial courts to interfere in cases involving socio-religious custom, even if the rights of the marginalized were violated. With the birth of constitutional democracy, the culture of reluctance was replaced by a call for a dedicated judiciary to protect the rights of citizens. All judges across the courts in India ranging from the district courts to the Supreme Court must reflect upon the constitutional vision of securing justice, equality and liberty. There is a need for us to introspect on our actions and decisions and to question our own prejudices and preconceptions. For until we open our minds to multiple views of persons with varied lived experiences, we would be lacking in our role as judges. An institution